All right, uh, good afternoon or good evening, and uh, welcome to this discussion on the results from uh, your structured trial number uh, number one. So this was your first uh, chance to sort of look at the uh, decision program, and now we're going to go over the results of the decisions that you made. So if you look at your screen right now, um, what I wanted to show you first, and I just added this sheet uh, um, for fun to the output just to show you what it would look like at time zero. So before we've done any decisions at, at time zero, I started you all off with a uh, hundred million dollars in cash in the home office. So you can see that right here, a okay, hundred million dollars in, in cash in the home office. And that's also reflected in a hundred million dollars in common stock at par. Okay, so when you start the game, when you uh, get your allotment of capital at the beginning, that's where it's going to show up. It's going to show up as common stock at par and then uh, and in subsequent cash. So everything's in home office uh, at the beginning. And then we have our, our three areas, Eastern Canada, Western Canada, and Central Canada, which is uh, our operating area. So we're going to be transferring capital or cash to those areas uh, to get things started. Okay, so that's uh, what we did in in uh, in period number one. So this balance sheet here that you see on your results is the output that is generated after you made those decisions. So we all made exactly the same decisions for for period one. So your uh, output should look exactly like this. Okay, so you can see that things have changed a little bit. Uh, we no longer have our hundred million in cash in the home office. We've got uh, a little bit less than that. And that's because of our first decision. So if you recall, we took $50 million and we transferred it from home office to central Canada. Okay, so essentially we uh, um, you know, took uh, money from our home office cash and put it over here into the cash in central Canada. Okay, now it's important to sort of look at some special accounts that we have here. Okay, so this special account, the first one I want to highlight is this one called subsidiary control. Okay, and that's an asset and you'll only ever see that in home office. And that represents the amount that home office has invested in, in any of its areas. So you'll see that, uh, um, you know, we invested $50 million in one of our operating areas. So that gets uh, um, debited to... Uh, um, subsidiary control. So of course we've got a 50 million dollar, it's still an asset, so it's just a swapping of assets, uh, much like you would if you bought a plant or you uh, um, you know invested in securities or something, you're just swapping assets out. So 50 million dollars goes to Central Canada and we record that in our subsidiary control account on uh, in the in the home office. Okay, I'm just going to freeze the panes here so it's easier to see the the titles. Now if you scroll down a little bit you'll see another kind of weird account uh, something called subsidiary control. Okay and this is very similar to uh, home office control except it's a liability and it shows up in the area so you can see that it shows up in central Canada here as 50 million dollars and that is our way of recording the money that has been sent from home office. Okay, so that $50 million uh, gets deposited into home office, into the cash account, and then the corresponding double entry uh, is this uh, liability of, of home office control. Now, of course, we don't have $50 million left here because we spent it on some stuff, but uh, you know, if the first transaction, if we were to look at that, you would see that it was uh, um, you know, $50 million over in central Canada. So let's take a look at what we did with that $50 million. So the first thing we did is we built an edibles plant and we built a cannabis plant, okay? So you can see that reflected here in net plant and equipment of 32,950,000, okay? Now, that's not the total amount of the plants that cost because one of them starts to, to depreciate. So the cannabis plant, which you can use right away, starts to depreciate. So you won't see the full amount that you spent there because some of it will be recognized as depreciation. Your edibles plant doesn't depreciate. So that 32,900,000 um, uh, represents, just hang on, I'm going to try and open up my data log here. Uh, so that's the uh, 21 million on the uh, greenhouse and the 
or for the greenhouse costs there or the uh, the cannabis plant and uh, 13 million on the edibles okay so that's 34 so a portion of that or you know 5% of that 21 million has depreciated which is why now your um, get this thing out of the way here so we can go back to our output that's why our uh, net plant and equipment is down to 32,950. So presumably $1,050 of that uh, uh, cannabis factory has has depreciated. Okay, so that's why it's left. Okay, so those are the, the two things we did there. The other thing that we did is we produced 30,000 units of grade zero cannabis in central Canada. And uh, you can see that's reflected in the balance sheet there that the unfinished goods of inventory of standard X. So X is cannabis, Y is edibles. Uh, we have $450,000 worth. Okay. Now there's some other stuff going on here too. So let's, uh, let's take a look at uh, a couple of different things. Um, first of all, our cash in the home office is now 50300000 So it looks like we've gained 300000 there. And you're saying, well, where did that come from? Well, interest. Okay, so we would have had uh, interest uh, pop up in our income statement, and that's from having $50 million in the bank. And then sure enough, you'll see on the income statement, let me freeze the panes here again, uh, you'll see $300,000 worth of interest uh, showing up. So that's why we have $50,300,000. And note that because we made money, we pay tax on it of, uh, you know, roughly, uh, I don't know what it is, 10%, can't, don't, can't remember what it is, 20 maybe, uh, $66,000 of taxes. So our net earnings in home office are 234. Now, if we look back at the balance sheet, we'll see that taxes goes right to uh, accounts payable. So we'll pay that in cash next period, but it's just reflected in the balance sheet on accounts payable. Okay, so that's... Uh, um, why we have a payable there. And you'll notice that that earnings of 234000 uh, that shows up in our, our cumulative retained earnings in home office uh, at the end of period one. Okay, and notice uh, our retained earnings in uh, Central Canada are negative. Uh, we lost $2.5 million. Not a big deal. Remember, we were just building stuff this period, so we uh, you know, can expect to lose money. And I would say that the majority of that loss is depreciation anyway, so not a huge deal. In fact, let's take a look at the income statement in Central Canada. You'll see we have no sales, but we have depreciation and fixed costs of $2.6 million. So those, those two accounts are, are aggregate graded together. So that's depreciation. Uh, which I think we said was uh, 5% of, of uh, 21 million, which uh, I think even in the new math is, yeah, that's uh, 1.05 million. And then if you look at the, uh, at the data log, you'll see the fixed cost to one, to, to run one uh, cannabis plant is 1.555 million. So that's where that 2605 million is coming from. Okay, and then the other thing there, we have some interest income, and we know where that came from. Uh, that's uh, from positive cash balance. I think we had $14 million left, and uh, indeed, that's uh, uh, what our interest rate is on that on that positive cash balance. So there's our loss of uh, 2.5. And note that we don't pay any income taxes because we lost money. Okay, so uh, that uh, amount of loss uh, results in no taxes. Okay, so that's always good. We don't want to pay taxes when we lose money, do we? All right, so let's uh, look at one other thing that we did, and that was produce. So I'm going to flip over to this inventory tab here, and you'll see uh, that we had no sales. Okay, so this inventory tab gives us all of the uh, activity like sales in units instead of uh, in dollars like the income statement. And our manufacturing cost analysis, so we have that one plant or factory, and you can see that we produced forty-five or $450,000 worth of, sorry, I've got emails popping up on me here, $450,000 worth of inventory. Uh, and that was 30,000 units. So we can figure out our unit cost quite quickly here just by dividing the two. And we can see that our unit cost is $15 per unit. Hey, that's exactly what was in the data log. So uh, we know 
that that is the variable cost per unit. And note that we had the fixed costs and some other stuff there too, but that's all good. All right, so now that $450,000, just uh, a, a quick point here that some of that is paid in cash and the rest of it goes to accounts payable. Okay, so, uh, you know, in terms of our, our cash flow uh, in, in Central Canada, uh, we only really paid 60% of our manufacturing costs in, uh, in, uh, in home office. The other parts, the 135 and the 45 that's left over, or the 30% and 10% represents uh, things that go into uh, accounts payable. Okay, so uh, you don't have to do anything with this accounts payable. You just have to have some cash left in the area and it will automatically pay itself off. Okay, uh, good thing here with no line of credit. Uh, the line of credit happens when we run out of cash, but there is none of that. So uh, that is pretty much what happened in period one. So your balance sheet and your income statement should look exactly like these. And if they didn't, then you probably made a slight error. You can go back and, uh, and fix it before we move on uh, to uh, decision period number two. Okay, so that is uh, that sort of uh, uh, ends the uh, discussion on uh, structured trial uh, number one. Uh, next period, you're going to do some stuff like some research and development, some securities, and do some production of edibles. Okay, we'll talk to you soon.